go to uh, Ann Wagner of Missouri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for this uh, timely hearing. I want to also thank the witnesses for their service. When the last administration signed its um, very flawed nuclear deal with Iran, many hoped that the economic incentives would entice Iran to leave its destabilizing, violent agenda behind and to join the community of responsible nations. I, I quite frankly, never shared that optimism. Nearly three years later, Iran's behavior remains deeply disturbing. Iran's support for Assad and for terrorist groups throughout the region compromises U.S. interests and, frankly, the security of our allies. It is absolutely critical that the United States use its strength and its economic clout to hold Iran accountable for its proxy army of terrorist groups and extremist militias. Uh, Ambassador Bloomfield, U.S. policymakers see factionalism uh, in Iranian domestic politics as kind of a ray of hope, uh, but you have criticized Washington's longstanding kind of naivete in this regard, and I agree. Uh, wishful thinking has impaired policymakers' ability to assess the Iranian threat with clear eyes. Dissenting factions within Iran um, have yet to succeed in modifying the regime's behavior abroad, it seems. However, that's not to say that meaningful change can never happen. Can you assess uh, here briefly the, the long-term possibilities for internal reforms in Iran, please? I, I will. Thank you very much. And I agree with all of your comments, Congresswoman. Uh, there are several countries in this world which are one-party authoritarian states, Russia, China, Syria, North Korea, Iran. These are circles of power that have similarities, even though the culture is different. They never intend to lose power. This regime has been in power for nearly 39 years. It's the same people. Some of them become hardliners, and then 10 years later, they're reformists. I'm not saying that they are all identical drones. No human race produces people who agree on everything. We, we fight about politics in Washington. They fight about politics in Tehran. But if the people push hard enough and complain about the economic deprivation, the lack of rights, the abuse, executions, more than 50 percent of the executions in the Middle East are Iranian executions, the tier three trafficking in persons, they're, they're hanging people from ropes for trafficking drugs, but we're catching IRGC 18 wheelers in Europe with drugs. Right. And so the pip, there's so much that, w that could be said about what they've done. If this ever catches up to them, not one of the reformists, not one of the moderates can walk down the street and not be said, you were part of the 39-year reign of terror. So I think they all know that. Everything that they do is to stay in power. And I think when you start with that piece of wisdom, the JCPOA, they came to the table, maybe because of economic duress. But let me just say that even if we hadn't given them all that money, they have huge oil reserves. They, have, they share one of the largest gas fields on the planet. They have tens of billions, upwards of 100 billion, probably, in the religious foundations. The issue is not whether we're giving them the money, although I know it upsets people. The issue is they have the money. They're just not spending it on the people. And that's a, that's a fight between the Iranian people, 80 million of them, and this circle of clerics that has held power for 39 years. I appreciate that perspective very much and appreciate it being in the record. Um, Mr. Rademacher, I haven't seen the pre-announcements of the president's uh, announcement, but let's, let's just say that the president does decide to either reimpose sanctions or um, walk away from the Iranian uh, deal at this point. How, how can we use it to our advantage to perhaps strengthen uh, his hand in the North Korean denuclearization talks? Do you see any uh, way, shape, or form in doing that? Uh, that, that's an interesting uh, question. Um, the, you know, the conventional wisdom, and I think we've heard it expressed here today, is that um, walking away from the JCPOA makes it harder to strike a deal with, with North Korea because they'll assume that President Trump can't be trusted to, to honor commitments that, that uh, the United States makes. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot to be said for that argument, but I, I think that's probably not President Trump's analysis. I, I, I think probably his analysis is the opposite, that um, it will be a signal of strength and determination uh, that, that he sends to the North Koreans, that by walking away from a deal that didn't 
adequately address the nuclear threat from Iran. He's showing them that he's not going to settle for something that's inadequate. Um, now, you know, I, I think a lot of people would, would disagree that that's the effect, but I, but I, I do think actually. I think it is. I will that, say this. I believe that it is America's strength. Mm -hmm. I believe it is the you know maximum pressure campaign. I spent some time in the Korean Peninsula and um, on the China North Korea border, and I do believe that our strength, the sanctions package, has brought um, the players to the table, especially Kim Jong Un and. Um, it'll be interesting to see what dynamic this has, I think, going forward. So, Ms. Harmon, please. Um, if talk if I just might add to that, though, um, a as Link Bloomfield just said, regime survival is hugely important to the Iranian regime. I think regime survival is just as important to the Kim regime in, in North Korea, and they've been in power for 70 years and presided over the most atrocious human rights abuses and so forth. We all agree with that. So if they're interested in regime survival, uh, why would they voluntarily give up a, a pretty highly developed nuclear industry uh, 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 to a goal of denuclearization? Because why their people are suffering, their people are starving, their people are under such oppression from both a human, uh, human rights and an, an economic standpoint. I believe that's why, um, certainly why North Korea has come to the, um, to the, to the field. Mr. Uh, Ambassador Bloomfield, you agree? No? Good. Simon, please. Um, finish just, up. just to respond, uh, I think the regime is responsible for a lot of that starvation. It is. And deprivation of rights. And I think if it gives up its nuclear weapons and allows for a, a, an entry into the, the, the normal world by North Korea, it risks its survival. I'm not making that case. I don't want that to turn out to be true, but I'm saying from the perspective of the Kim regime, uh, I think they will be reluctant uh, to now restore or, or provide for the first time rights to their people because they could easily be overthrown. Thank you for your perspective. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the, uh, the time. Uh, and I will uh, yield back.